After leaving the European Union on February 1st, the United Kingdom has become a third country. The withdrawal agreement provides for a transition period ending on December 31st and until then union law will apply in full in the United Kingdom. During the transition period the EU and the UK will become or partners to find an agreement but uh, at the moment we know how this is working. Negotiating for a new partnership which in particular provides for free trade area is really difficult at the moment. However, it's not certain that such an agreement will come about and enter into force at the end of the transition period. In any event, such an agreement would create a relationship which, in terms of market access conditions, will be very different from UK participation in the internal market, customs union and VAT and excise duties. For this reason, all parties involved, and in particular the economic operators, are made aware of the legal situation after the end of the transition period. After the transition period has expired, the EU rules on aviation security and maritime security no longer apply to the UK. This has the following consequences in particular. In aviation security, the regulations that lay down common rules and basic standards for aviation security, as well as mechanisms for monitoring compliance with the common rules and standards, are not there anymore. The regulation that lays down detailed measures for the implementation of the common basic standards for aviation security and the annexes to these regulations do not apply anymore. And another regulation with regard to third countries that are recognized to apply security standards that are equivalent to the common basic standards for security in civil aviation is not yet in place for the UK. In this legal framework, the UK has been listed as a third country, which from the end of the transition period will be recognized by the EU as a country applying safety standards that are in the line with the common basic standards for civil aviation safety in relation to the safety of aircraft, passengers and hand luggage, check baggage, freight and mail. And that all is detailed below, but that's only for the time being. One regulation prescribes an aircraft security check and search and the control of transferring or onward passengers and their hand baggage and the control of the transferred check baggage unless the aircraft comes from a third country listed by the Commission. And the UK has been concluded in the appendices of the um, regulation. As a result, after the transition period for flights from the UK, aircraft will be able to transfer passengers and their hand baggage as well as check baggage on connecting flights in the EU and are excluded from further searches or controls. But that does not go for flights between EU countries. Air carriers, regardless of whether they are in the EU established in the United Kingdom or another third country, that tra transport cargo and mail from an airport in a third country to the EU by the competent authority of an EU member state as a company that carries air cargo or mail from a third country airport to the EU is promoted and ensure compliance with certain safety measures. As a result, at the end of the transition period for the carriage of cargo or mail on flights out of the UK, designation as ACC3, that's a very special term in these flight security measures, is not required and the ground handling companies which are part of the air carrier supply chain do the cargo and mail from the UK to the EU transport do not need to be designated as a regulated agent in a third country or as known consigner in a third country, nor are they subject to the EU aviation security validation process. UK recognized aviation security validators will no longer be recognized by the EU after the end of the transition period. The EU aviation security validations carried out before the end of the transition period, including the reports and the EU validation prepared before this point in time, remain valid for the purpose of identifying the airlines, operators and bodies they have validated. Bodies located in the EU who are registered by an EU member state are approved as regulated agents or known consigners and are recognized by all EU member states. The regulated agents and known consigners approved by the UK competent authority will no longer be recognized by the EU after the transition period has expired. They are then no longer part of the EU secure supply chain. The designations they formally had and they were issued by, issued by competent authorities of the United Kingdom will no longer be recognized by the EU member states after the transition period. 
As a result, all third country air carriers and freight carriers that have been designated by the UK authority must have the necessary uh, status granted by the competent authority of an EU member state after the transition period has expired. The relevant commission services will assist member state administrations in the process of relocating responsibility for the designation of air carriers. Regulated agents in the third country and non consignors in the third country currently designated by the UK by facilitating the administrative transition. Airport suppliers and suppliers of onboard supplies must be approved by the competent authority. And according to the EU regulations, the approval of a regulated supplier by an EU member state must be recognized in all EU member states. The authorizations issued by the competent authority in the United Kingdom will no longer be recognized by an EU member state after the transition period has expired. And it's very similar for security in, in marine transport and those regulations. Because increasing security on ships and in port facilities do have regulations on their own. And in these regulations laid down the EU rules in the field of security as C. And the articles provide that the member state's competent authority for maritime security requires ships intending to enter a port to provide certain safety information. Member states can request each other to exempt these services from the obligation to provide security related information in the case of international liner services between their territories. After the transition period has expired, this option provided for these regulations no longer applies to the United Kingdom. This means that after the end of the transition period, all liner services that fall under the scope of these regulations, such as ferry connections between the UK and the EU member states, will be subject to the obligation laid down therein, provision of security relevant information. And all employees who carry out safety inspections or are involved in the treatment of confidential information, including employees of recognized security bodies, a suitable security clearance has been carried out by the member state of the nationality of the employee concerned is absolutely necessary. This means that UK employees who have been cleared for security by the UK are no longer allowed to perform the security inspections set out in this policy. The same applies to inspections within the framework of the regulations on compliance with the International Code for Security on ships and in port facilities. So you see a lot has changed through Brexit. Small information for you, YouTube has just activated membership on my channel. So if you're interested in some exclusive material in the future, have a look at the join button down below this video. And if you want to know more about European politics right now, YouTube has chosen another of my videos right here for you on the end screen, right next to your chance to subscribe to my channel. I'll see you in my next video. Click and enjoy. Viel Spaß!